close to 70% of college graduates actually fear that AI will replace their jobs in the very near future. And this is just one of the many myths that is plaguing the software engineering world today. Welcome, my name is Bago, and I went from landing my very first ever six-figure software engineering job in junior year of my university to now becoming a successful entrepreneur who owns a B2B consulting firm, and we do seven figures annually in revenue. Today, I'm going to show you the top five myths that are holding all software engineers back from reaching their true potential. And without further ado, let's jump right into it, starting off with probably the biggest myth that's circulating the world today. And that is that AI will replace all software engineers, or most of them. Because let's set the record straight. AI might replace programmers, but they will never replace software engineers. Software engineers are more than just programmers. The level of creativity needed to become a software engineer, the level of creative thinking needed to become a good software engineer, and of course, the understanding of human-centric problems and the way to approach them are all things that AI at this current time simply cannot replicate. In hindsight, it is probably decades still behind of actually approaching these problems. So the day that software engineers actually become fully replaced by AI, it will probably be the last job on earth that will get replaced considering all the other jobs it would have to actually do to be able to replace software engineers. But of course, as I mentioned before, it will still replace programmers because all AI will really do is it just will augment the current capabilities of all software engineers, right? Because AI is a tool similar to all the IDs that you might use, similar to all the autocorrects you might see on your you know, phone whenever you're typing. Those are simply tools helping you to do a certain task and AI will simply be used as a tool to augment the work of a software engineer. Now, regular programmers that might have gotten hired before and all their entire thing would just be simply to program something. Sure, those guys would get replaced by AI because now AI can do the same exact thing. But the core role of a software engineer to actually think critically and approach human-centric problems, they will never get replaced. Actually, more than anything, the demand for software engineers will continually increase as we see a rise in AI and ML space in general. So that's one of the myths that I just wanted to get right off my chest and discuss and that is that AI at this current time, how things stand, how we're taking a look at things, will never replace good actual software engineers who do a lot more than just programming because this is actually going on to our second myth that all good programmers are good software engineers. All good programmers are not good software engineers. Now, the vice versa is true. All good software engineers are good programmers. We can agree on that. But not all good programmers are good software engineers because as I mentioned before, software engineering is a lot more than programming. You have create, you need to be creative, you need to think critically, you need to have good problem solving skills, anything you approach, you need to approach from a human centric point of view. Programming is simply a small subsection. You can call it a prerequisite to you becoming a software engineer. But the actual, what a software engineering encompasses as a whole is significantly a lot more than just programming. I talk about communication skills and a couple other things in my other videos, but that's just a small subsection of what software engineering actually entails. A software engineer is not just somebody who only knows how to program. They also have a wide variety of other skills that they need in their arsenal. You can think of programming as simply a prerequisite to becoming a good software engineer, but a good programmer does not mean that you are automatically a good software engineer. In fact, you are far from it because that's essentially the prerequisite of what you need to do to even be considered quote unquote a good software engineer. And that's the second myth that I wanted to knock down right off the bat because many times people will look at extremely well adept programmers and automatically think that they are good software engineers. But whenever you see them in a workforce or whenever you see them in an actual company setting, most often than not, these people do not make as much progress as other people would have nearly thought because other skills such as communication skills, getting along with other people, working in a team environment, talking with stakeholders, getting good requirements, knowing how to take requirements down, working on a timeline. All of these things are skills outside of programming that you need to know as a software engineer and you need to know to a certain degree to you know actually make you do good enough work for the other party to say, okay, this is good enough. Nevertheless, that's the second myth that I wanted to discuss. And let's move on straight to the third myth that we'll be discussing today. And that specifically has to do with, once again, the job market today. And that is that career opportunities for software engineers are going downhill. Many people believe that software engineering in general is going downhill. And while this might be true if you look at it from a job aspect sort of things, right? While we have a lot more job openings currently, we have significantly more CS graduates coming from not only the US, but from all across the world, right? There's a couple of 
actual sources are linked down in the description below there where you can go and take a look at this yourself. But there is a very big variance with regards to how many CS graduates we're having and how many job openings we're having. But at the same time, another interesting thing that's taking place is that the amount of contractors being used is going higher and higher and the amount of freelancers is once again increasing and increasing. Career opportunities while in a traditional nine to five setting might actually be impacted on a grander scheme of things, I would say things are looking far better than ever before with regards to software engineers as a whole, because you have the option of now freelancing, going to solopreneurship, becoming an entrepreneur, and pretty much everything else that I talk about on this channel. But you should not think of your job as a software engineer only, okay, I can only go to a nine to five and do that. No, I talk about how software engineers are essentially at the very core creators, right? You create a software solution to a technical or a non-technical problem, but at the core, you are a creator. You have to be essentially in line with creating stuff, whether it's an application, whether it's a software, whether it's a website, doesn't matter what it is. It can even technically be non-technical, but then that's going down another rabbit hole. But essentially, you as a software engineer are a creator. So while on a, on a nine to five setting, jobs might be impacted on the long term, right? Because with all the layoffs, senior devs have a lot more advantage now than the junior devs. So if you're a fresh CS graduate, it's gonna be harder for you to get a nine to five job. Nevertheless, that's not to say it's completely impossible, but at the same time, there's other opportunities that opened up that might not have been there before. Remote work that you can do as a contractor, freelancing that you can go into, or even just entrepreneurship that you can dive into. So that's the third myth that I wanted to discuss. With that, it actually carries on over to our fourth myth. And if you remember, we just talked about the entrepreneurship route and software engineers now working a traditional nine to five. The fourth myth is that any business that a software engineer starts, A, has to be either an app or a software. And I'm here to tell you that that is simply just not true. While it's true that you as a software engineer are a creator and you'll most likely be creating a software solution for a specific problem, whether technical or non-technical, you still have the capability of going into a non-technical problem or technical problem and providing even a non-technical solution. I'll give you an example. Currently, in my case, I have a B2B consulting firm. We help companies make data-driven decisions, right? But at the core of our very offer, while our entire offer isn't built around this, but the way we analyze the data for these companies is we have our own AI and ML models that I have personally built. So while I utilize my software engineering knowledge to build something to help me provide a service to others, the core company itself isn't bound by what I have built. So while it's true I did make a software solution, quote unquote, it's not like this solution is primarily what's being offered. No, it's just simply helping me deliver on my core service. It's just helping me deliver on my core offer. It's just a small part of it. It helps augment it, but it's not the entire thing. And you can do something very similar as well, right? A lot of the times when people look at you know, even when you're traveling, if you're a tourist and you're going to various countries and you want to look at places to eat, what's the first thing you do, right? You usually go on Yelp or go on Google Maps to look at the restaurants near you. And most often than not, what I always like to do is check the website. And if I see that a restaurant doesn't have a website, I most often usually skip that restaurant and don't go there. Because if they haven't taken the basic steps of at least having an online presence, then just, you know, that simply kills the mood for me. But this is just another thing. The problem of restaurants not having a website, you can go ahead and even, you know, have a web development agency for those types of things. So while a restaurant itself is technically far away from any type of software solution, you can still provide a software solution to that problem. And while your entire you know, offer, quote unquote, is, hey, I'll make a website for you, what you're really doing is just driving traffic to their actual restaurant. So there's a lot of different ways, there's a lot of different avenues you can take as a software engineer when it comes to entrepreneurship. And nobody says that you only have to do either an app or a software. That's simply just not true. You can go into many different fields. I've seen people in e-commerce, such as myself when I first started off, I got into e-commerce. I've seen people go into the crypto space, making trading bots and, and so on and so forth. I've seen people do pretty much every single thing that they can possibly do, whether it's they become an agency owner, whether they get even into construction, whether they get into architecture and they use you know, their software engineering skills to help create something that provides a better solution to that specific problem. But nevertheless, you don't have to be bound by, okay, I have to you know, make a software or an app. You can simply make something that augments a service that you wanna provide or a product that you wanna create, and it will be better than the competitions because you have that overwhelming advantage in software engineering. And with that, that pretty much leaves us with our last and final biggest myth 
that is plaguing the software engineering world today. As I like to say, save the best for last. But the final myth that I want to discuss is the fact that all software engineers are antisocial or that software engineering is a perfect field or perfect major to get into if you're an antisocial person or you don't like human connection or human interaction. And I want to say that this is the furthest thing from the truth because as I mentioned, this misconception that all software engineers do is code or program is simply not true. That is a prerequisite for you to become a good software engineer, but it's not the entire thing. In fact, this probably makes up less than, I would say, 30% of what you need to become a good software engineering. Requirements gathering, creative thinking, approaching things through a human-centric point of view, and a lot of other things on top of communication, being able to market yourself. There's simply so much more to a software engineer than just being able to program. And when people get into this field and they think that they can be antisocial, they don't have to talk to anybody, they don't have to communicate with anybody, guess what? You end up with all the problems that software engineering currently has. This is why people cannot as easily find new jobs because they simply don't know how to communicate and market themselves as good, right? People don't know how to actually get those promotions that they need. They don't know how to actually go into entrepreneurship because they simply don't even know how to communicate with stakeholders or even lead a team or even hire somebody that they need to. And all of this comes from a misconception that, oh, software engineers are antisocial or you don't, they don't need any human interaction or they don't need any communication skills. That is simply far from the truth. Sure, the technical is important. Of course, that's, it's literally in the name software engineering. But understand that that's simply a prerequisite. It's simply a prerequisite, a baseline that you need to then learn everything else that you need to become a good software engineer. But don't make the mistake that and, and think that you don't need communication or you don't need marketing skills to succeed as a software engineer. Because any good software engineer will tell you that outside of your technical skills, you need to hone your communication and marketing skills to the utmost degree. And the better you are at communicating and the better you are at actually showing yourself to the world and your capabilities, the more successful you will be. And this is the same exact reason that oftentimes people think that software engineering is slightly unfair in a sense of they'll see people that are further ahead of them in their careers, right? But they might think, well, this person's not as technically adept as me, right? That could be true. You can probably be a better programmer than the person in front of you. But if that person in front of you knows how to communicate better, knows how to market himself better, and actually has a lot of other skills that you're lacking, guess what? He's more valuable to the company as a whole because it's not just everything. It's not just about technical skills. They're important, but they're not the be all and all you know, result that someone is looking from a software engineer. So without further ado, I hope you learned something from this video and understood the top five myths, but just to give you a quick refresher of what they were, first and foremost, AI will not replace us, okay? AI will not replace software engineers in anything. If anything, it will just augment our work and the work that we do. Second, all good software engineers are good programmers, but not all good programmers are good software engineers. Make sure you drill that in your head as well. Third, uh, let's talk about what we just mentioned with regards to career opportunities for software engineers. While it's true that a typical nine to five might be impacted on a long enough time horizon and on a grander scale of things, career opportunities for software engineers will only get better, whether it's through freelancing and contract work, whether it's through just nine to five, or whether it's through entrepreneurship and pretty much all other opportunities that you have. Fourth, uh, what we just referenced right now, right, with regards to the antisocial stuff. You cannot ignore your communication and marketing skills as a software engineer, and you have to focus on a lot more other things other than your technical skills. Think of your technical skills as simply a prerequisite to get into a specific class, right? In this case, being a software engineer. And of course, last but not least, the other myth that if you're a software engineer, you have to get into the tech world and you have to make an app or a software. Don't think like that. You can get into pretty much any business model, but you need to be smart about it that it's gonna be a high leveraged business model and it can get you where you wanna go. But you can always either use your software engineering skills to augment what you wanna do, whether it's just providing a service or creating a product, or you can simply just create the actual product and service as the actual software or app. It's not a be it end all solution, right? You can decide which path you wanna take, but don't think one-sidedly and don't tunnel vision into, oh, I have to make a software or an app. No, you can go into other ventures and simply use your existing skills to get a better leverage, to gain a higher leverage in those other ventures, be it an actual physical product or be it a service that you're providing. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and because I'm sure many of you were wondering about some of the myths yourself and I hope this sheds some light regarding the truth and what it actually looks like from my point of view having been in the space and now where I am today as an entrepreneur, looking at it from the side. And without further ado, as always, thank you so much for watching and have a good one.